Welcome back, you spectacular CircuitPython programmer. This is Prof G with another installment of CircuitPython School. And in this lesson, we're going to introduce the REPL, a sort of programming scratch pad that's especially useful for experimenting with Python code. We're also going to learn about sequences, tuples, and zero indexing, and we're going to apply that knowledge to control individual lights on our CPB board. Let's code! So this is the code from the prior lesson. If you haven't saved that, you likely want to do that now. Then save your code.py to your circuit.py volume, and we'll start. Now we're going to be working in the serial console in an area called the REPL. So open the serial console, and you can grab the top edge of the serial console window and pull it up to give yourself a little bit more room, and then access the REPL by pressing Control-C. And we see the light stopped flashing on our CPB. That's because pressing Control-C stops the currently executing program. And if we scroll up, we can see where the executing code was stopped. That's okay, that's expected, our code isn't executing anymore. But we can also see this message down here that says press any key to enter the REPL, R-E-P-L. So I'll press return, and we see two things. The version of CircuitPython that we're using, and the board that we're using, which is a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit NRF52840. By the way, that is the microprocessor for the board. In the way that most Windows machines use Intel microprocessors in them, this board uses a chip by the Nordic Semiconductor Company. It's based on core technology provided by ARM or ARM. ARM technology is also in just about every smartphone, including most Android phones, all iOS devices, and the new M1 Mac chips. Now back to the REPL. Now the REPL is a way to communicate with your board in Python, executing code one line at a time or in small blocks. And REPL stands for Read, Evaluate, Print Loop. And like the name says, it reads any input that you enter, evaluates the statement, prints the results, and then loops back to the beginning so it could read the next statement that you type in. It's sort of like a computer scratch pad where you can try things out. Now code in the REPL isn't saved, but it's a good place to experiment. And you know you're in the REPL when you see this prompt of three greater than symbols, or chevrons on the left hand side, so let's try it out. We can type in a simple print statement, print, open parentheses, double quotes, you are awesome, exclamation point, close quote, close parens, press return, and the computer confirms you are indeed awesome. We can also enter simple calculations. For example, 2 to the 8th would be 2 star star 8, press return. That's 256. You can also create and work with temporary variables. So for example, I could create a variable called 2 to the 8th, which equals 2 star star 8. When I press return, that value has been created and there's 256 inside. Then I can use 2 to the 8th in a calculation. And there are a few shortcuts that we can do in the REPL too. If I type in TWO and then press tab, Moo spells the rest of my variable name. That's because the only thing that Moo knows about that starts with TWO is 2 to the 8th, so it's able to guess, hey, that's what I wanted to type in. Then I can say, let's take that value to the third power, star star 3, press return, and the number that I get, 16,777,216, is the number of distinct colors that you can create through all the combinations of the RGB values. Now, if you make any changes in the Python editor up top while you're in the REPL, if you press save, your code is not gonna execute. You need to get out of the REPL first. You do that with control D. Notice when we do that, all of a sudden the code that's already saved on the board will start executing again. That's why our lights start flashing. By the way, when we leave the REPL, Moo immediately forgets about any variables that we've created while we were inside that REPL session. But let's get back into the REPL with a control C again. Now we can enter lines from our code to execute, but remember we've got to initialize any values before we can use them, and we need to import any required libraries before code using those libraries will work. So if we try this statement here, pixels.fill paren paren 255,0,0 paren paren, and press return, we get an error message, name error, pixel is not defined. That's because we haven't created pixel, which is what we're doing up here in line six. So you might say, okay, well, why don't I try line six? I'll shrink my font a bit, copy this line, paste it down into the REPL, and I get another error. This says name error NeoPixel is not defined. So notice this line uses NeoPixel, and that's the name of the library that we import in line three. So we need to execute the import NeoPixel statement. I'm actually gonna import board, because board is being used in line six as well, and we're eventually gonna use time, so I'm gonna import time too. Now it's actually okay to highlight and copy multiple statements, so I'll do that right now, and then I'll paste them down below. You see the input prompt on the left hand side where you pasted stuff in changes to three equal signs. That's paste mode, but those lines have been entered. Now I'm going to show you another trick too. Pressing the up arrow will cycle through previous commands that were entered during this Moo REPL session. Pressing the down arrow will go back toward the most recently entered commands. If I press the up arrow on my keyboard once, I see the last line that I'd entered, that's this pixels equals neopixels.neopixels command. But if I press it a second time, I can see I get the pixels.fill command. Now if I press return, and keep an eye on your CPB while you're pressing return, hey, look at that, it lit up in red. Nice! 
Now notice I can press up arrow again, that pulls up the last line that was entered, and I can alter that so now it's 02550. When I press return, I see the CPB switches from red to green. Now what if I press control D, my CPB starts to flash in blue because it's executing the program that was saved because I just exited the REPL. Nice! Now let's get back into the REPL again, that's control C and press any key. Now it can be kind of handy if you want to experiment with colors to be able to use the REPL like this. For example, I might want to enter the color orange, and orange is a mix of RGB. So I can go over to Google and I can search for RGB orange and see what Google suggests. This first link says try 255.165.0. So I can head back to the REPL and first create a variable, orange equals, in parentheses, 255,165,0, and then I try to do a pixels.fill orange. If I press return, oh, look what happened. It doesn't know about pixels. That's because I exited out of the REPL, and when I re-entered, I didn't have any of my old import statements or my variables that were created, but I can just copy my import statements and my pixel statement up top, paste it down below. Now I can up arrow twice, press return, orange is created, then I can up arrow again and re-enter my pixels fill orange, and look at that. I see my CPB change color, but it's sort of yellow looking. Because I'm in the REPL, I can experiment with color. So I can try to set orange equal to 255,40,0. 0. Then if I press up arrow twice for pixels.fill orange, press return again, and that looks much nicer. So you're getting a sense of how you can use the REPL for experimentation. Now the value orange is actually an ordered set of three components, R, G, B, inside of parentheses. Now Python supports a bunch of different data structures that are these ordered sets known as sequences. Now the ordered sets inside of parentheses, like color, are tuples, pronounced tuple like quintuple, or tuple like quadruple. Pronunciation is contentious. Like G-I-F, is it GIF for graphic interchange format with a hard G, or is it GIF like the peanut butter? Fun fact, the guy who created the format says it's GIF, but tuple or tuple, either one works for me. Now it's actually possible to get at the contents of different parts of the tuple through using an index with a number in brackets. So I can break out the first, second, or third value here, but here's the thing. Computers start counting their indexes from zero, not one. So to get to the first value in orange, try typing orange, open square bracket, zero, close square bracket. Press return, that gives you the first value in the tuple is 255. Then I'll up arrow, I'll change the 0 to 1, it gives me the second value of 40. I'll up arrow again, I'll change the index value to 2, that gives me a 0. But watch what happens when I up arrow and then change the index value to 3. I get this index error, tuple index out of range. So you want to make sure that you never use an index that is out of range of the number of values that are in your ordered set. Now you can also break out the values of a tuple and store them in separate variables like this r comma g comma b equals orange, so you can put multiple variables separated by commas on the left of the equal sign. When I press return and then type in print and then in parentheses rgb, we get three values for each of those three different variables, so we've broken the tuple out into its components. This will be useful when you learn about adding return values to functions because you can use a tuple to return multiple values. Now there are also a bunch of useful functions you can perform on sequences. For example, you can get the length of a sequence by using the len function. So just type in len in lowercase and between the parentheses, pass in our tuple value, orange, press return, and we get three. Now why are we learning this? Well, it turns out that the NeoPixels are also a sequence. So you can see that we've defined our NeoPixels with the name Pixels and stated that there are 10 NeoPixels in the sequence. And these lights are numbered around the CPB and they're zero indexed, so the first value is zero. The last light has an index of nine, which is one minus the length of 10. So back in the REPL, let's try out LEN and in parentheses we'll put in Pixels, press return, and look at that, we've got 10. Now you might be thinking, hey, can I refer to the index value and then just color in one light on the NeoPixel? Well, you can, but we've got to do something different when we assign the color to an individual light. First, let's turn off all of the pixels on our CPB, so pixels.fill, and then we'll pass in 000. And you might think this statement would work for lighting up our first pixels, pixels, and then in square bracket zero, dot fill, and then in parentheses, orange. But if we press return, we get an error. This says the tuple object has no attribute fill. Now what this means is the individual components of the tuple value don't have access to the fill command. So the function or method known as fill that we access from dot notation, we can only dot fill on all the pixels at once. But if we want to color in just one pixel at a time, we can do it, but we've got to do it in a different way. We refer to the name of our light, so that's pixels, then the index value of the individual light we want to turn on, so we'll do bracket zero bracket, and then we use the equal sign, so not a function. Instead, we're just assigning that three number tuple value to this individual pixel value. Now there are no extra parentheses around the colors because this isn't a function. I could put in a single set of parentheses and three numbers, 
but instead I'll use my variable name orange. And if we press return, well, would you look at that? The first light is lit up in orange. Cool. Let's change the last light. Pixels bracket nine bracket equals, and how about make it blue, zero, zero, 00255. Press return, and it's blue. Double nice. Now we don't have to pass in the literal nine. If we want to get the last light in a string of pixels, we could type in pixels, and then in brackets, we could use the length function, len, and then open parentheses, pixels, close parentheses, but then we've got to subtract one. Remember, we're zero indexing. That means our last value isn't length of pixels, it's length of pixels minus one. Close those brackets, and why don't we set that equal to, we'll change it to red, 255, comma zero, comma zero, press return, and look at that, now it's red. Well, now I'm going to control D to get out of the REPL and close the serial console, and let's do some challenges. And first, why don't you complete the half and half challenge? So you want to write code to light up the first five lights in your CPB in red, and the last five lights in blue. So once you pause, give this a shot, and resume, and let's take a look at how you did. So I'm going to clear out some of the old code that I don't need. I'm going to keep my colors in here, but I don't need the code that's underneath the colors. I also don't need these two functions. I'm going to delete everything under while true and start fresh. I'll also add a comment up top that indicates that this is the half and half challenge. And the solution is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to light up the first pixel in red. That's pixels bracket zero bracket equals red. Then I'll copy this line and paste it in four more times, but I'll change the index values to one, two, three, and four. So now I've got zero through four all in red. Then I'm going to copy those five lines of code, paste them down below. I'm going to change the index values for these last five pixels to five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to change the color for those last five pixels from red to blue. Then I'll open the serial monitor to make sure I get no errors when I save and look at that. We've got red on the left side, blue on the right side. Challenge complete. Now I'm also going to save this to my CircuitPython lessons folder as lesson four, half and half, then return and save this back as code.py. And now I'm ready for our final challenge. So this challenge is one blue at a time. You want to write a program that will turn the first light blue, then wait one tenth of a second, turn the next light blue, wait one tenth of a second again, and repeat this pattern until all 10 lights are blue. Then you want to turn off all the lights, wait another tenth of a second, and then repeat this pattern from the beginning over and over again. So why don't you give this a shot, pause, and when you're ready, resume, and let's compare answers. So under my colors, I'm going to create a variable called sleep underscore time, and I'm going to set that equal to one tenth of a second. And then right underneath where I set pixel zero's color, I'll call time dot sleep in parentheses sleep underscore time. I want to check to make sure that I imported time, and I did indeed. And in pixel zero, I'm going to change the color from red to blue. I'll also change these other red colors to blues. And then I'm going to copy this line time dot sleep, paste it underneath all the nine other lines where I set the color to blue. And now that all the lights are blue, I want to turn them all off. So after my last time.sleep, I'm going to say pixels.fill, and then I'm going to pass in black. I'm going to do a time sleep sleep time once again. This should work. Let's open up our serial monitor, click on save, take a look, and look at that. We're lighting them all up in blue, turning them off, and starting all over again. Python programmer, this is looking magnificent. Now you'll notice that we've got a lot of lines that are repeated. In the next video, we're going to learn how to use for loops to accomplish the same thing with more efficiency and far fewer lines of code. So why don't you change the comment up top to one blue at a time and save this to your circuit Python school folder and go celebrate with the beverage of your choice because you once again finished a lesson full of big learning. We learned how to use the REPL as a temporary workspace, but we learned that this resets whenever you leave the REPL. We learned that you enter the REPL with a control C and we get out of it with a control D. We learned about REPL shortcuts, tab for code completion and up and down arrow to access previous lines that were entered into the REPL. We learned how to work with sequence indexes, how to work with tuples and decompose a tuple into its multiple components. We learned about zero indexing, the len function. We completed the half and half challenge and the one blue at a time challenge. Feel good about your skills, Python programmer. There's more big learning to come. Keep at it.